Last summer, I posted a video trying to predict the award winners of the upcoming season. I gave my pick and two honorable mentions for MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Sixth Man of the Year, and Most Improved Player. To make things interesting, I'll give myself a point if I got the prediction right, and a third of a point if I got one of the honorable mentions. Now, after 10 months, how accurate were these predictions? First up is Rookie of the Year. I had Jabari Smith Jr. and Jaden Ivey as my honorable mentions, but I guess Paolo Poncher would win the award, and I was correct. In all honesty, I don't really watch college basketball outside of March Madness, but after learning a bit about the top prospects, I felt safe with picking Paolo as my rookie of the year. I won't dive too deep into the team because I really like the future of the Orlando Magic, and I plan to make a video about them later, but since I guessed correctly, I get one point. Next up is Sixth Man of the Year, and while I had Jordan Poole and Tyler Hero as my honorable mentions, I got a right again with the new Celtic, Malcolm Brogdon, taking home the award. I assumed that Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White would lead the bench unit as Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown would stay starters. But in all honesty, I wasn't the most confident in the pick due to Malcolm Brogdon's history of injury. What convinced me to pick Malcolm Brogdon as my Sixth Man of the Year was the fact that he's a player that can play defense, is exceptionally efficient, and will get the opportunity. So far, I'm two for two. The three players I had for most improved player were Anthony Edwards, Keldon Johnson, and my actual pick, Tyrese Halliburton but none of them won the award. A little bit into the season, I was really confident with the Tyrese pick, but after he missed a fair amount of time due to injury, I just knew his case wasn't at the level of Shea's, Lowry's, or Brunson's. I really expected the Jazz to be a bottom two team this year in the West, but Lowry's play really gave them the ability to fight for a playoff spot late into the season. Even though they didn't play any postseason basketball, this Jazz team has a really interesting future, and Lowry is an important piece to what they're building. Unfortunately for me, my streak ends and I won't get a point this round. Next up is Defensive Player of the Year. I had Draymond Green and Robert Williams as my honorable mentions, but I had Bam Adebayo as my final selection. For the 2021-2022 season, I thought that Bam was the best defender in basketball, but since he had missed a considerable amount of time, it really hurt his case for Defensive Player of the Year. What didn't help was that all three players that received more votes than him had also played more games. When it comes to the Heat, I thought they would be around the range of a fourth seed this year, and having a healthier year, I thought Bam would get the Defensive Player of the Year. When I first made the video, it had been a month since the news broke that Jaron Jackson was going to be out for four to six months due to foot surgery. Because of this, I thought that Jaron would miss a considerable amount of games, hurting his case for Defensive Player of the Year. Now, my final chance to get a point is with the MVP. But since I picked Luka Doncic as my MVP and had Giannis and Embiid as my honorable mentions, I only get a third of a point. As an individual, Luka had a phenomenal beginning of the year, but the Mavericks really had a down year in general. The Mavericks already had a lackluster defense, but after losing their best defender Dorian Finney-Smith due to the Kyrie Irving trade, their offense just couldn't make up for what they lost. Even if the Mavericks had finished around the fifth seed like they were before the trade, I don't think I could say that Luka had a better case for MVP than Jokic, Giannis, or Embiid. And while Embiid seemed to have been an easy pick for MVP this year, I just felt like it seemed too much of a layup. And since I had just seen Luka take a pretty poor team all the way to the conference finals, I was pretty high on Luka at the time. The MVP this year could have gone to Embiid, Giannis, or Jokic, and I think regardless of who won it, there was a great reason for each player to win it. But with that in mind, my goal was to finish with at least three points and I did fail that challenge. So let me know if you have any ideas for what I should do. I'm new to YouTube, so using the like button, commenting or subscribing lets me know what types of content people want to see, especially because the playoffs are in full swing. Speaking of the playoffs, in this video, I talk about some of the players that are under the most pressure this postseason. 